Good evening. Happy Monday to everybody at Emmanuel Everywhere. Praying you guys are doing good on this Monday. Uh, and God has continued to be keeping you as he is keeping me. So praying that you're doing well. Uh, want to begin, open up with the praise break, of course. You know I like to have a good praise break for us. So this praise break for today uh, comes by means of a daily bread. Uh, if you could read the daily bread, but this was published in the daily bread on uh, August 1990. Now, it's that old. And the story is told of Lori Anderson. She's a missionary to the uh, Kandoshi Indians of Peru, who was looking for a quiet place to pray while she was there and reading her Bible. So she went down to the edge of the river. And after reading the Bible, she took up prayer and she closed her eyes, but she did not see that there was a deadly anaconda weaving through the water until it struck and it buried its fangs into her flesh. It withdrew and it struck again, hitting her arm again and again as it held her, screaming in its coils. It reared up to deliver the death blow. Then suddenly the giant snake, never known to release its prey, relaxed its grip and slithered off into the water. Lori gets back to the village and while being treated, there was a witch doctor from a nearby village who came into the hut and just stared at her. She couldn't believe that Lori had survived. She had, uh, the, the witch doctor said that her son-in-law who was a witch doctor uh, actually chanted to the spirit of the anaconda that morning and sent it to kill the missionary. The missionary's comment is what takes us to a praise break today and a thought about our lives. She says, I'm certain, Lori said, that except for the protection of God, it would have worked. Can anyone shout today to the protection of God? No matter what or who has tried to curse you, they all fail because of the protection of God. It was the protection of God that kept Daniel while he was in the lion's den. It was the protection of God that kept the covering around the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And it was the protect protection of God is the same that they had and the same that you have and how you've done it. What protection of God can you celebrate today? Can you celebrate? And this is for free that even in the death of a saint, it's not evidence that God's protection plan is flawed, not when the controller of this life is in his hands and not the enemies. God's 360 protection plan is good in two worlds. It works here and it works in heaven. So even in loss, we still have a shout. Samson died in a loss, but not after God's protection plan was reactivated. His plan guarantees life, and it is beyond death. It guarantees eternal life. And so today, the shout is, whatever snakes came your way, whatever venom struck you, how many times can you give praise to the fact that God protects you and covered you even after the strike, even after you were, were coiled up in the snares of the enemy. It, what should have worked didn't work. God's protection is something for us to shout about every single day. I pray that that talk took you into some kind of thought process to give God some praise. Somebody asked me recently, <laughs> if I think that I would ever run out of praise breaks. <laughs> I don't believe I'll ever run out of praise breaks because God will never run out of blessings. Whew. As long as he's still in the blessing business, I'll always have a reason to praise him. And you know what? As the old folks say, that if he never does another thing, I got another praise. I got enough praise breaks behind me 
to praise his name and bless him for the rest of my life. And so that's a testimony. I ain't never running out of praise breaks and neither are you. We always gonna have a reason to give God praise in the midst of whatever we're going through. Every storm, every battle, we'll always have a reason to give God thanks. All right, uh, want to get into our charge for this week. Uh, Pastor is preaching a new series uh, entitled, This Is Us. Uh, I love that he took a piece of the show and he's going to narrate some of the show into this, the messages. Uh, I'm a fan of This Is Us and I'm, I'm like him. Cried the tears for two seasons and then I started falling off, man. I got tired of crying so much. I agree with him on that. And so, but uh, it's a great, great show and a narrative. And he's using it to title this first sermon that he preached out of that series, This Is Community. Um, those scripture references that he used, Acts 2 and 42, 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, Romans 15 and 26, and Philippians 3 and 10. Um, what I'd like to do is walk us into this week uh, with the main scripture being uh, Acts 2, 42, but then I want to give you uh, a thought that I had from each particular scripture that I think fit perfectly for our walk this week, all right? So, the scripture is uh, out of Acts uh, 2 and 42. Well, it, it simply says, uh, all the believers devoted themselves to apostles teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. I love that uh, particular verse. But what I want to talk to you today about as we walk into this week is, and we talk about community. I, if I had to put a title to this, I'd call it common unity. Not community, but common unity. Um, that word, the very word community means engaged in each other's lives and experience. That should be the definition of community. And we know that, of course, he references our, our, our uh, vision of the church to be a community of Christ followers being transformed by the word uh, inspired by love, impacting the world. Um, and we also know a, a lot of, about, about core values, that God is at the center, people matter, beyond the walls, excellence, grace-inspired giving, and cultural relevance are part of who we are. But those texts is about us and common unity, uh, those particular verses. If I look at those verses, there was words that pinpointed me from each scripture. Acts 2 and 42, I take note to the word devoted. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, I take note to the word partnership. Romans 15, 26, I take note to the word taken up. And Philippians 3 and 10, I take notice of the word, which was also shared in Acts 2.42, sharing. What is common unity? Common unity, if we're looking at those words, we're thinking about devoted first. If you're going to be a community and if you're going to have common unity, meaning that we come together because we have something in common to make community, that word devoted is a source word. We are in this for the long haul. Uh, we are devoted. We are dedicated. So we know that we're dedicated to God. We're dedicated to Christ, but we're also dedicated to our church for our service. We're dedicated. Um, I, I'm dedicated by making sure that I'm present, even if it's online virtually, to help impact and move our church forward. It takes all of us to be present in for the long haul. Uh, ain't no short timers in this game. We've got to be present and available to help move the church forward. That is community, moving it forward wherever we are so that we can impact the world. The second is partnership. That word I mentioned, part, first devoted, second partnership. Partnership means simply we're not giving up on nobody. Partnership means we stand alongside of, 
a church that stands alongside each other and that is not divisive and that is not separate is a church that the devil is going to have a hard time with. He's going to have a hard time with the church that sticks, to, sticks together, hell or high water. He's going to have a hard time with people who stick together. That's why he does so much work in trying to separate people from one another. It's a sad commentary that some of us are so used to being treated with toxicity that in many cases, we're mad at a person that refuses to be toxic. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the truth. Some of us are so used to things just turning out where everything is toxic. You are actually mad when you come into an environment where things ain't toxic. It's unusual for you. No, I, I don't got time to treat anybody or be toxic with anybody, be angry with anybody. Or I'm, my job is to get God's work done and to help somebody. And I ain't giving up on you because God has never given up on me. That ought to be all of our mantras, that we can't give up on people because God hasn't given up on us. We've got to be in this for the long haul of partnership common unity suggests that we're together, unified, in partnership, and devoted to one another. Third thing is that we're taken up. Taken up. That word taken up is the first term that was originated in the 1400s in the sense of going to war. Taken up. Taken up arms is what they called it. A holy war didn't just begin in Israel. We've been in war with Satan since the garden. And I need to let you know that. And so if you're going to be a part of a community and we're going to have common unity, the next thing is we've got to take up our arms in the word of God and God's power and go fight the enemy. That means that we are kicking in together and we are at war and you are a warrior. I need to tell somebody that if you're going to do this thing, you got to get in the trenches with me and begin to fight. This is why we've got different many. This is why the text says we have many members, but one body. Just because I'm on the front line, that doesn't mean that you can't do your work in the medical tent or another area of the church. We all come together because we are fighting a war against principalities that Ephesians 6 tells us we are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so God, we know that we need God, but we've got to take up arms, band with one another in the midst of the fight. Do I have a witness today? Is there anybody who can raise a hand that says, enlist me? I'm willing to go because you know the many battles that God fought on your behalf, the least I can do. And my reasonable service is to get in the battlefield and fight fight for him. That's why I don't care till in my last breath, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep talking about his goodness. I'm going to keep telling about his miracles. I'm going to keep giving somebody a reason to bless him in the midst of their pain. I'm going to keep on trying to pray for people and, and see God heal their bodies. I'm going to continue to pray for folk and pray for families, even after we lost our loved one, because this is war and the devil wants nothing more than to see you weak and in a, in able to fight because think about this the wolf only attacks the weakest sheep he looks for the one that's hobbled he looks for the one that 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 can't get nowhere on his own he looks for the one that straggled away from the herd he looks for the one that is weak and wounded and that's who he attacked that's why we got to stick together We've got to be in common unity and community with one another simply for the fact that we are stronger together than we are apart. Take up arms. The last, and I believe that we're doing it, is sharing. Sharing with each other and then sharing with the world. We need to be about the common unity of sharing. Sharing what we have, our resources with one another. People that are in need, we come to the rescue. Uh, people that you, you got a neighbor that needs something, you go give it to them. Whatever it is that we can do to share with one another and share with the world, we also share Christ at the same time. Sharing, we ought to be about doing it. This is the common unity that needs to be about our community. I don't wanna keep you long today. Let me come to a close. 
Have you ever heard the allegory of the long handled spoon? It's a story, it's a fable of one day a man said to God, God, I would like to know what heaven and hell are like. And God showed the man two doors. Inside the first one, it was a, he stood, he found himself standing in the middle of a room and there was a large table or area or, 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 or a, a, a large area where people were standing there. And in that area was a large pot of stew. Smelled delicious, it made the man's mouth water. But a people sitting around the table were thin, sickly, the area seemed uh, famished, and they were holding spoons with very long handles, and each found it uh, possible to reach the pot of the stew, but because the handle was longer than their arms, they couldn't get the spoons back to their mouths. So they were unable to be nourished. The man shuddered at the sight of their misery and, and their suffering. And God said, have you seen hell? So then he goes uh, behind the second door. Room appeared exactly the same. There was a large round table, large pot uh, of stew, and the room was flourishing with, with vegetation. And, um, and, 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 and as the man's mouth watered once again, He's seen the same long handled spoons, but these folk didn't look the same as the other folk. They were well nourished, plump, laughing, and they were talking and enjoying life. The man didn't understand. He says, you have you seen heaven? The man told the Lord, I don't understand what this is. I, I can't figure out what this, this, this story, these visions mean. And God smiled and said, love only requires one skill. These people learned early on to share and to feed one another, while the greedy ones only thought about themselves. And now they're starving because they refuse to use their long handled spoon to feed one another. These folk learn how in this room called heaven, have learned how to feed one another. And that's all I wanna tell you today about sharing. We survive by sharing and feeding each other and not by being selfish because in doing so, if we are selfish, we are destined to starve. And if we should starve, if we should starve, there will be that the church won't last long if we starve one another. The, the ministry won't go far if we starve one another. Things won't line up if we starve one another. Uh, uh, the, the things that we desire to do won't fall into place if we starve one another. We have got to learn how to feed one another in common unity because if I got it, it means you got it. If, if I have it, I can give it to you. And in turn, I know you're going to give it to me. And nobody has the lack of thing because we what we bring together is more than what we have alone. And that is community. So as we think about this week and as you march into this week, my prayer is that you begin to think about the many ways that we can be more devoted, many ways that we can be in partnership with what God is doing and what our church is doing, the many ways we can take up arms and get in the battle and fight. And then lastly, the many ways we can be sharing. Because when we share what God has done, you don't have to have all these big old scriptures that you're going to put on people. Sometimes it's just uh, a beggar telling another beggar how he got his bread. Common unity. God bless you today. Let me look. We do want to have a prayer today because we have a couple people we're praying for. So let me look in the chat and see if we got some folk in here. Uh, amen. I see Minister Snow. God bless you for joining with us. We are the ride or die saints. Amen to that. Yes, yes. The devil roams around seeking who? Yes, man. Yes, yes. Amen. Selfishness does nobody no good. Amen, Mother Martha. Amen. It's my duty and upbringing to be a blessing to others. Sister, that's where we come from. We come from that. 
Uh, we learned at a young age how to share. Matter of fact, that's one of the first things you teach your kids, right? How to share, right? Amen, amen. Well, uh, I do want to be intentional in prayer. We have something special to pray for tonight. Um, our um, musical director, Alan Ross, is in the hospital right now. Uh, we want to be intentional in praying for him. We also want to pray for my sister's uh, 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 friend or her her um, her maid, her, her boyfriend, uh, Minister uh, Crystal, uh, who was a good friend of mine. Uh, Y'all know my sister, uh, Malik. We want to be in prayer for Malik, who is also in the hospital. And of course, we want to be intentional in praying for uh, Brother Magic Lindsay and the loss of his his wife, Melanie, that we have been praying for over and over in the midst of the grief that he's in. Um, um, just in seeing his posts, it's heartbreaking. Um, you know, everything that he's around, even in his home, reminds him of his wife. And, and I, can, I can only imagine the type of pain uh, that he wakes up with and goes to sleep with at night. And so we definitely want to be praying for, for them. So um, we this is normally we have our prayer on Wednesdays, but we're going to end with prayer tonight. Definitely want to be lifting up Dr. Gooden, loss of, of, of Quilly in the same manner, her husband Quilly. Uh, uh, definitely a good man, uh, had so much positivity toward me in ministry for many years. And uh, I'm, I'm really going to miss him. You don't get a whole lot of people that encourage you in ministry. I mean, you do, but you don't know whether it'd be real or fake sometimes. But he was always one to come up to me and, and say something to me about the message. Or And he was, not, he was a quiet man. He didn't really say a whole lot, but he always came up to me. And I always talked to him about his van. He had this van that I loved and we would always joke about it. And so we're going to miss him. And so we'll be in prayer for the bereaved, but we also want to be intentional prayer for Alan Ross and please continue to keep him in prayer. He needs it. And then uh, also for uh, Brother Malik. Let's go to the Lord and then we'll close out tonight. God in heaven, we come to you right now, God, thanking you. Thanking you for this community of which we all have common unity. Unity, that you are God all by yourself. The God who woke us up this morning. The God who gave us a good portion of health and strength. The God who allowed us to make it through the day to right now. And the God that is in control of our next moments, even after this stream is over. We have that common unity that you are God all by yourself. Master, we pray you would walk us into this week, understanding this community, moving forward in this series with our church, understanding what it's going to take for us to fight this battle that we fight. Give us your strength. Give us your power is our prayer. Now, God, we come praying for Alan Ross right now, our musician. We pray that you would bring him to a place of healing. We pray that you would deliver him just as he has struck the keys that have blessed our ministry with music and blessed your nostrils with praise God, we know that you are the one who knows every key to his body. And so master, we pray that you would heal him as only you can. We lift up brother Malik to you, God. We pray that you would continue working on his body, bringing him to a place of healing that he might be able to go home. We pray for sister Crystal, who's been by his side the whole time and we pray that you would continue to bless her as she continues in this ministry. She's been on the battlefield with us. So God, we're thankful and we always wanna make sure we pray for our family and our people who are in the trenches fighting with us. We know not all the battles that we each face, but we all face a different battlefront at times, but God, we know we also face the same enemy. God, we lift up those who are bereaved among us, God. We lift up Brother Magic Lindsay and the Lindsay family, God, on the loss of Melanie. God, we pray that you would touch Brother Magic right now. God, we pray that in the midst of his tears, God, he will find a reason to smile because she's in your presence. She belongs to you. And so, God, we pray that you would just give him some comfort even in the midst of his tears. We pray that you would look in on Dr. Gooden, who is dealing with the same pain, looking around and wanting to have a conversation with her husband, God. But we pray that you would just touch her in the midst of, of her pain. Send comfort your way is our prayer. Then God, for all those special prayer requests that 
uh, may have been unspoken. Those people who are in the midst of sickness that we don't know, God, we know you're a healer. Those who are in the midst of bereavement that we don't know, God, we know you're a comforter. So God, we pray that you would look into the hearts of your people who are in and out of our own communities dealing with these things. And God, we're going to give you the praise. We're going to praise you in common unity because you are great and greatly to be praised. Bless your name this night. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, blessings on you guys tonight. Uh, we'll see you on Wednesday uh, for a uh, prayer meeting. Now, I'm still looking. Now, I know we've been having, I've been putting the link up there to live for people to come in and to uh, join us in testimony. But why don't you do this? Because I, I think sometimes we... Um, uh, you know, you think we're putting you on the spot. Maybe, maybe everybody don't have a testimony, right? What is a testimony? Let's talk about that real quick. You know, a testimony doesn't have to be, people think that, oh, I got to have this big, deep testimony for it to be deep. No, no, no. It don't have to be a, a deep testimony. You just have to know God did it. As simple as that. You just got to know God did it. If you graduated from college and you didn't know how you did it, but you can look back and, and trace your steps back and see the many ways that God provided that got you to that. That's your testimony. That's your testimony. So all I'm looking for is one person to come in with me and maybe share a testimony with us. I believe that other people get inspired by what you overcame, right? I could, over, I could tell you about my testimony all day. And people know it because they know me. But what about your testimony? Maybe part of winning the battle for somebody else is for them to hear that there is actually somebody living on this earth that fought on the same battlefront with the same demon they had to face and won. So with that said, inbox me. You don't got to put nothing in the chat or nothing. If you want to come on and be a part and share your testimony, inbox me. I'm going to give you a special invite to come in and join me and simply share your testimony. Do you know that this testimony will reach people because this broadcast is still put out on YouTube? I mean, we don't have no control over what goes viral, what doesn't go viral or whatever, but we do know that the putting it out there makes it available for somebody else, right? What if somebody heard your testimony and said, you know what? I know somebody dealing with that. Let me share this with them. Now you're ministering and battling on a whole nother plane. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. So inbox me, let me know, I got a testimony. And then we wanna talk about it. And then I wanna bring you in, have you give your testimony on Wednesday night before we pray, and then we'll go into prayer. How about that? We need to start making this more of a community as well. Even though we are online, that don't mean people don't need to hear you. They need to hear you. Don't just come to service on Sunday thinking that that's cool. Oh, I'm gonna join the live on Sunday and that's good, good enough for me. No, no. Even if you're virtual, you can still come in. You can still do something. You can still be impactful. And that is what I want to help lead us into next. All right? Well, God bless y'all, and y'all have a good night. Please know that I love you to life. I really do. And if you need anything from me, you need prayer one-on-one, -on -one, I'm available to do that. Hit me up. God bless y'all. Love y'all.